Hey guys, so uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do something a little different today. We're gonna do a test video for the Simplex. Um, you know, I I I did a video. I was up at the park. It got overrun. I didn't find anything while I was there, and then the kid, you know, then the kids showed up. So. I got some footage, but it's not really, you know, I'm not going to post it. I didn't find anything but a couple pieces of junk and a penny. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I've had a lot of people talking in my comments lately, and I've gotten a few emails about the Simplex, um, and whether they should get it or not. Um, that's, you know, you got to make your own choice on that. I would recommend it, especially if you're thinking about going with a cheaper machine, you know, if, if, that, if that's a thought that's crossed your mind, is buying something cheap to get into the hobby. I would recommend, um, you know, going with the basic package of the Simplex and, you know, just, uh, you know, just doing that. Why not? It's 250 like something like that, and you get the the stock coil and, uh, you know, the machine, which is all you really need. Um, you might need a digger and a pinpointer. So here we go. I got a, we're going to do a test on some things I found, some things I got. So I got a 1921 silver dollar there. One dollar silver. Um, we're going to put that there. Boom. This is my yard, so I don't really care. Um, I have this silver uh, bow tie ring that I found. I'm going to put that right there. Hopefully it doesn't blow away. It's a little windy out here. Um, I do have a very large, uh, very large ring here. It is, uh, it's just uh, stainless. It's not sterling or anything like that. But I want to show you guys what that sounds like with the Simplex. I do have a 925 earring, 925 dangler, I'll put that right there, and I'm not even worried about whether or not I can find this stuff because the Simplex finds everything in the land. I do have this costume jewelry ring, which I thought was silver at first, and then after I cleaned it up I couldn't get you know, some of this tarnish off, but it's a real pretty ring. We'll put that right there, and this will also show you the separation of the simplex you know these targets aren't super far apart but they're not close either i do have uh this gold plated it is gold plated this ring some of you might remember me finding it the gold plated ring the stone fell out um so that's gold plated we'll put that huh, right there and then um i think it was last week i found these two earrings on the same day um they're both 925 sterling they're both gold plated so we'll put one right there and one right there. Um, so really what I want to show you guys is not only what the Simplex is capable of, but the different sounds and stuff. Um, I think it's important to, you know, associate with your sounds. Um, field mode I'm not going to use for the test um, just because it's mainly just real, real squeaky tones and stuff. Uh, I think we'll go with probably part two and um see what that sounds like okay all right so we'll start over here so that's that gold plated ring right it's ringing up at 21. no problem you know it, it picks it up and you can turn your sensitivity way down it's still gonna pick it up it's a ring simplex ain't gonna miss it We got this uh, 925 earring here. Nope, that's uh, the ster that's the sterling, not sterling. Why do I keep saying sterling? This is stainless steel, big old man's ring, and that's ringing at 23, 24. Okay, so let me pick those up to get them out of the way. Those are two big boy rings. Look how big those suckers are. How? So they both ring up right around the same range, low twenties, right? One's gold plated, one's stainless steel. So right here, we have a dangle earring. Okay, nine two five silver dangle earring, and this one threw me through a loop, right? It's ringing up a 65 on the VDI. Threw me through a loop. 
the 925 dangle earring. I think it rang up so high because of the shape of it. It's got that uh, that ring shape. Do I have something else down here in this area? I guess we'll see in a minute. Okay, and then right here, we have... You hear how clean and clear that sounds? That's a really nice little silver ring. 925 silver on this one. Just listen to it. It's exactly how it sounded in the ground. Oh, so, hang on. We won't go in Park 1, because I have Park 1 uh, at a discrimination. But li listen to the recovery speed. It catches it multiple times on every pass. And it's not fluttery. It's the same exact tone so many times. No matter how fast I swing it, it catches it dozens of times. That's the 925 little bow tie um, ring. Right? Here is the 1921 silver dollar. And look at that, guys. 97. 96. Catches it every time. The Simplex is a monster. The Simplex is a freaking monster. Like... 96, 97. Every time. These are the only things that keep me digging, like, the 95 and up to, uh, VDI numbers. Because usually if I dig a, a 95 VDI, it's either, like, a giant sprinkler head or a really deep, really good shape can. But this gives you hope that 96 on that one. This gives you hope that digging those um, impossible sounding VDIs, you know, the 95 and up on the Simplex, that, you know, maybe it'll be a... Maybe it'll be a little something, a little fancy for you. Alright, so this one here is a 6566. And this is that costume jewelry ring. But you hear that, guys. It catches it every time. But you hear those little blips and bloops that it catches every now and then? That's what's going to tell you that it's not real silver. Is those little blips and bloops. And it gets a little scratchy. It's not the same exact tone on every hit. Okay, so that was this guy. I mean, it's a pretty ring, and if I could get it that tarnish come, to come off, I mean, my, my, my wife would probably like that if I could get that tarnish off, but I've tried. I've tried so hard to get the tarnish off. And I can't. I can't get it off. Now we got a couple things that we have to find still, okay? Um, because these are two really small items. It's two silver earrings that are down here, right? They're both gold-plated. One's white gold-plated, and the other one is yellow gold-plated. Alright, so here's what I want to let you guys know about with earrings. Alright? <clears throat> earrings are so small that it's really hard to get a really nice reading on it until you got the coil, like, right in front of it. You know what I mean? Like, that sounds good. That, that's a... That's something you would dig every time every time you would dig that can you guys hear that man you wouldn't not dig that okay but the VDI tells a different story okay Here, let me let me shrink down this guy real quick so you can see 
42. 41. 41. 39. 41. So if you're just out listening to uh, VDI num or looking at VDI numbers, 39 to 45 is generally a pull tab range uh, or a ring pull range. Okay, and that's why tones are so important. Knowing your tones, because I wouldn't dig a 40 if I was just going off of VDI numbers. But if this was the tone that was coming through, I would dig that all day. However, the, I found this at the beach, right? And I believe this one was ringing up below a 20 on the VDI. When I pulled this out, I was so surprised because I was certain that it was foil. But that shows you right there that you just never know. You just never, ever know. Oh, come on. Um, you never know until you get it out of the ground, right? Where is it? Alright, right there. Are you guys listening to that? This guy was almost not picking up. And you know why. It's because... I'm pretty sure... Because the clasp wasn't on. See? And that's another thing that you got to remember. So it's right there. Right in front of my coil. Now it picks up every single time. And I put it down there with the clasp open so that you would see how different it rings up. All right, so let's pull this. Now listen, clasp is closed. Beautiful tone, 36. Those are pull tab numbers. But those are very diggable tones. 20, yeah, 29... 33 classic pull tab tones. However, let me open the clasp. And look. That's the clasp open. It's not picking it up nearly as much. And look what happened with the VDI. VDI went down to a 23. So it sounds faint and scratchy. Unless you're rubbing it right on the coil. I'm rubbing it on the coil. And that sounds great. I would dig that. This is about an inch away. That's two inches away. Scratchy and faint. 23. I probably wouldn't dig it. However. However. I don't focus on just the VDI. So again, we'll close that clasp up. And we'll do the same thing. I don't want to break it. It's a fragile little earring. Yeah, so, but look at those numbers, though. 44. You know, those are generally no-no numbers if you're lo just looking at VDI. So if your tone sounds like crap and it's a 44, it's very possible that it's, you know, a pull tab or a ring pull. If your tone sounds like this, you dig that every time. Here, let me slow it down. And then there's also this. Listen to the tone change. So if you're hitting it with the edge of your coil, you're going to get really weird tones. And then you can back your coil up over it. And you'll get that nice, even, same exact tone on every swing. Okay? That's why it's important to listen to tone. I thought it was just reading up a 90. I mean, that wouldn't really surprise me. It's silver, but it's not a big honking earring. 
yeah. So anyways, guys, earrings ring up very strange. We found any gold yet, so I can't, um, I can't really tell you how gold rings up, you know, with the simplex. I can't give you a test on that because I haven't found it yet. Um, but I can tell you that I dig most things. So, the reason I'm sweeping over this now, and letting you hear all these beeps and boops, to show you that that wasn't on, like, an empty test bed. That was on, you know, ground that hasn't been, uh, ground that hasn't been cleaned out. Showing you how good the simplex is at recovery speed. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, I would recommend it. And yeah, there are better machines, but not for that price, okay? For that price point, you're getting a serious, serious machine. $250, I think it is, for just the machine and the big coil. The big stock 11-inch coil. Um, I think this coil cost, I think it was $110 um, if you buy it separately. The earphones are like 90 to 100 bucks if you buy them separately. They do have a package that contains the big coil, the small coil, the earphones, and the machine. I can't remember how much that one is. I want to say just under 400. And then they also have a $450 package or something like that. That's you know, it's got like a hat and maybe a dig or two. I don't know. Um, the way I did it is I bought the machine, the machine and the big coil only. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, maybe I should have even just spent the extra hundred after that and gotten the small coil and the headphones too. But it's all good, you know. If you're just looking for a machine to get you into it that you can use for a long, long time and know that you're, you know, you're going to find the same crap you're, that you'd find if you were using an Equinox. Because I swear to you, this thing will find the same crap an Ex Equinox will. But... The plus side, I think, that the Equinox has that the Simplex doesn't have is this gets really chattery at the beach. And um, not in the dry sand. In the dry, fine sand, it's okay. But in the wet sand, it's really chattery. Um, the Equinox, I've seen, you know, many, many people use the Equinox, and it performs very well at the beach. Um, the Vanquish performs really well at the beach. Um... I've heard the Excalibur performs really well at the beach. There's tons of machines that will perform better than this because all those machines are more expensive than this. For 250 bucks, you're getting what the four, four to $700 detector can do. However, the Equinox is extremely, extremely uh, feature rich. Um, you can do so much more. You can change so many more settings in your Equinox. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people want, but you're going to pay a lot more money for um, the option to do that. So if that's not your real, really your cup of tea is changing all your settings and stuff, and you just want something that you know is going to hit every target it comes across, or at least 95% of the targets you come across, and you want that recovery speed, you want the reliability, this thing is durable. Like, I throw this thing, guys. Like, I throw it. Literally, I'm, when I'm out detecting and I get a target, it goes, and I don't worry about that. You know what I mean? This thing is built to last. It's tough, um, and that's, you know, a lot more than people can say about a lot of other detectors is they're not so tough. Um, you know, a lot of other detectors will break right here at the ears, and then there's things that they sell you can buy from um, companies and uh, people that you know, will protect those ears a little better and keep them from breaking, but that's even more money that you have to spend to protect a machine that you already paid a lot of money for. I think when you get a machine, you shouldn't be having to buy things to keep it from breaking. You know, if it breaks because you were, you know, smashing it on something, that's your problem. But we're talking about, you know, you drop some, you know, you drop it and, you know, you dropped it a little too hard or it hit a rock and something breaks, that's not okay. You know, I smash this thing up against trees, up against rocks, and it's never, never broken. And, you know, there we have quite a few other people that do their videos with their simplex, and you can be rough with it. You don't have to worry about it. This thing is built like a tank, and it performs like a freaking tank. 
Um, it is a, it can get a little heavy, um, especially with the big coil on. If you're swinging it for you know three, four, five hours, you know your arm can start to get a little tired. Your wrist, um, your fingers can get a little tired from holding it right here. But honestly, this thing knocks it out of the park like every single time. I've been nothing but happy with this machine. The only thing I would want to upgrade for is uh, better beach capabilities. But at the same time, that's not worth another, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand dollars. That's not worth it to me right now. Um, this thing does good at the beach. It's just a little chattery. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, got a little bit of use out of the information that I showed you.